Coach Carroll recently dropped a very interesting little tidbit in one of his training camp press conferences saying that newly re-signed defensive tackle Jerron Reed was going to be moved inside to the nose tackle role in this 3-4 defense. This caught many of us off guard because we suspected when Jerron was originally signed that he was going to play in a 3-4 defensive end role in this defense and be asked to supply a little bit of pass rush within that. After all, that has been mainly the role the Seahawks have put him in during his pro career is trying to expect to hope he can give them a little bit of pass rush from the inside, which is, of course, very hard to get from defensive tackles, no matter whether it's a 4-3 or a 3-4 defense. So does this move make a lot of sense? Are they putting him in a position to fail at that point, moving him away from the strengths of where he's good to where maybe now there's a little bit of a weakness? Not that he's ever been bad against the run, but it's not necessarily ever been one of his great strengths as a pro. And the answer to that, I think, is no. And to understand why this move is taking place, I think you got to go back to his origin story. Go back to his days at Alabama when he was winning national titles. And the role that he was serving at that time was as a one-tech. And he was really known, he was really well acclaimed for coming out of Alabama and being your typical nose tackle, one-tech type defensive tackle. A guy that could be immovable at the point of attack, who could command double teams, who you could rely upon that you're not running at this guy or you're going to get your run game shut down. And the Seahawks, when they drafted him in the second round, were indeed thinking they were getting just that from Jerron Reed. But don't take my word for it. Let's look at a little blurb here from Lance Zerline in regards to a scouting evaluation on Jerron Reed as he was coming out. Reed is an elite run defender with the lower body strength to command his gap, but the instincts and timing to be productive as a tackler rather than just a space eater. Reed's lack of pass rushing ability creates a potential glass ceiling on his draft stock. However, teams looking for a battle-tested run stuffer will find an instant upgrade who should be able to come in and start immediately if needed. Jerron ended up proving Zerline wrong as the pass rush ability was a lot more than we first suspected and he was able to really build upon it through his time in Seattle. But there was always a part of me that thought that for Reed to take those steps forward as a pass rusher and to be more impactful in that realm, he had to take some steps back as a run stuffer. And some of this, I think, is evidenced in other players when you look around the league at a guy like Javon Hargrave, who's known as being one of the most dynamic interior pass rushers you're going to find in the league. A guy that got a four-year, $80 million deal this past offseason with the San Francisco 49ers. But a guy that you can see a very clear line of demarcation in his career. When he's originally with the Steelers, he's known more as being a real good run stuffer who can give you a little bit of pass rush. Sound familiar? But then when he comes over to the Eagles there and has a good couple of year run there with the Eagles, he turns more mainly to the forefront of becoming a really dynamic pass rusher. But you see those run stuffing numbers, especially if you look at it as the marker of PFF, those numbers are horrible. They're really, really low. And in fact, a place I hope our Seahawks are going to be able to attack in Hargrave's game this upcoming season. Jerron did a little bit of the same kind of thing. Not that he was ever bad against the run, but he wasn't able to be as dominant in the run as he was in college. When you look at his PFF scores going back to Alabama, he had an 87 score and then a 94 score in his final year. Those are phenomenal numbers. And you look on the flip side, he wasn't the most dynamic of pass rushers at the college level. So Jerron's just fitting back to his origins. He's just going back to his base skills. And I think he's going to fit to it very, very well. My name is Brandon Kane. This is the Hawks Nest. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. But beyond all that, don't you ever forget. Go Hawks.